Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, my friend uh, Anil Beirul uh, for the invitation and your colleagues. I'm really honored to be able to uh, be part of this uh, fabulous uh, gathering. Uh, just for the purpose of really for us this morning to be uh, frank and candid about where we are uh, in the region. And I, I think I'm privileged to, to say that I'm able to, to shed some light about where we are regionally just because we, we almost operate in every single market in, in the region. Um, therefore, I think I'll just jump straight into it is that, you know, where is the region post-crisis? And I like what Andrew have just shared with us is that, you know, thank you so much for uh, shedding so much light on the difficulties that are, are existing in the uh, developed world and giving credit to the developing world because that is really the theme of, of, of my direction, uh, Your Highness. Of course, we all agree that we all pass through challenging times. Uh, if it's really um, organizations that have lost some jobs, uh, projects that have been put on hold or canceled, probably some companies that have faced difficulties and, and, and gone under. But, but that's not only in the region, that's not only in, in Dubai, but I think, as you rightly mentioned, uh, Ireland, uh, if you would like to mention uh, probably uh, California on the verge of bankruptcy. And as we always say, Toyota, the first time in their life, 70 years of operation, they actually declare losses. So I think the world has gone through a big shakeup um, that, that we've, we noticed everywhere. But while people are focused on the difficulties in California, Ireland, Spain, uh, and the rest of, of the world that are having financial uh, difficulty, of course, we are still talking about economic growth in the region. And I think our Minister of Economy uh, just a few days back uh, talked about 3.5 uh, percent growth in our uh, GDP, um, and as you mentioned, probably the World Bank and other organizations are saying the same. But if you were to look at the United States, you have over 300 banks that went under. I think more to come, while the region still have very good, healthy banking system. I'm not saying that it's a perfect banking system, but at least it's a healthy banking system. Now, keep in mind that the U.S. government deficit is over a trillion dollar, while government deficits at least in the GCC are surplus. Because of the difficulties in the, in, the, in the developed world, you have economies that are putting the brakes on, cutting expenditure, and that's also, of course, is, is holding the economy down. You have majority of these economies in this region where they are really accelerating expenditure into all different type of uh, projects uh, for them to help their economy move uh, forward. So we've got banking system that's healthy, we've got government budgets that are decent, we've got revenues that are, that are reasonable, but also we've got demographics in our society that helps the growth of, of, these, uh, of, of, this, of this region. Uh, now, you know, the truth is that I think the recent bonds that government of Dubai have launched, that my own company have launched, we are at least over, six times oversubscribed. I think that tells you something about what the world think about, about this region. But the honest truth is that, you know, we're all going to talk about the business that I'm in. You know, how is the property market doing? So on, on the other front, earlier point, I think we are optimistic that we are starting a very interesting, interesting cycle of growth. Now, it might not be as good as the go good old days, but I think gradually we're moving that, in that direction. The property market, we all have to be very frank. I think if you were to look at Morocco, it's, it's completely different than, than Egypt, Saudi Arabia, or Lebanon. But while we talk about these uh, markets that have very interesting uh, growth stories in them, we still have an oversupply situation within the city of, of Dubai. Now we all understand that supply and demand is managed by market forces. Is it going to take 19 months? Is it going to take 18 months? Is it going to take 22 months? I think that's something for the market to basically balance itself and, and move on. But at the same time, the city is growing. We used to complain that you know cost of doing business is, is huge in Dubai, and mainly because of the real estate factor in the in the formula. So I think that is going to be a great advantage to the city that our value is is much more reasonable, and as a result, you know that's going to drive another uh, cycle of growth uh, for the uh, for the city. Now, 
the region as well, if I include India in it, India has a shortage of housing of, of about 27 million units. The same shortage exists in Egypt, the same shortage exists in Saudi Arabia, Morocco, and all the other markets that we're operating in, Syria. Therefore, I think if you look at these fundamentals, the future is very clear. The future is, I would say, that we are very optimistic about the uh, growth cycle while we are uh, operating in these, uh, in these markets. Now, let's be very frank. What have we really learned from the past three years? I think it's only human nature that under incredible heat and unimaginable pressure, that's actually what creates diamonds. Diamonds are created, people who understand geology, and I don't, it's created from heat an incredible pressure that gets you that diamond, the diamond that's shine, that's resilient, that's beautiful, that's valuable. And I'll tell you why I'm, I'm bringing you to this, to, this, uh, to this point. So therefore, Dubai have been criticized for taking too much risk. But the truth, I think Dubai should be celebrated because of the risk the city have taken. And when I say the risk the city has taken, I really don't mean the city. I mean all of us, people who are born here, people who came to the city, we all took risk for a very simple reason, that the origin of the word risk is an Arabic word. It means rizq, and rizq in Arabic means prosperity. By the way, when we researched this, it was a really very fabulous example. Because how can you get prosperity without getting up in the morning and taking the risk to drive your car to go to work? So I think the city should be celebrated for being prosperous, for being brave to move forward. And the good news, all of us, including the city, will never stop taking risk because we are energetic, we want prosperity, we want success, and we will we'll continue to take risk. But can we manage risk? Are we smart enough to learn? And after we learn, we don't forget the lesson. I think we are learning the hard way. <laughs> I think it will be a long time till we, till we really uh, forget the lesson, Your Highness. But that's human nature. So therefore, I believe that this is the spirit of the leadership of the city. It's the spirit of all of us in the city that will continue to take risk, to prosper, to move forward, because it's part of our DNA. We can't change that. That's just how we are. Now, I must say that in my own business, you know, I went through a, a harsh lesson as well. I'm a public company. Uh, the discipline of, of, of public companies have really saved our organization, to be very honest. Uh, I think we are still learning much more. I think our management style have changed. That's what I've learned is that we are hands-on, absolutely hands-on. We do not let go of, of, of where we are operating. We delegate, but at the same time, our eyes on the ball, not for one second we let go. I think that is something that maybe we used to do, but now we do much more, uh, much more often. I think efficiency is a new thing that we are, that's driving our operation absolute maximum efficiency because for you to make a dollar, for you to compete, for you to take risk and be able to sustain the risk, you really have to be focused. Uh, but at the same time, uh, please remember that, uh, uh, that while we're doing that, of course, you know, we need to talk about, we need to talk about you know, uh, moving forward, we need to talk about still taking risk while doing it, uh, while doing it right. I just want to share a very interesting statistic uh, maybe after I finish my, my last point, because I thought it's, it's very interesting. Somebody, I think Andrew was talking about, uh, you know, the activity in the city, so I have some numbers I will share with you. But gentlemen, my, my last point is re really, my question to you is that, do we, where do we go from here? So my question to you is that, if in 2006, I give you $100 billion, $100 billion, and I ask you, what will you do with it? What will you do with the hundred billion dollar, 2006? You will invest it most probably in AIG, most probably in Lehman, 
Burns term, somebody else, you would have lost it all. Zero. Nothing left. So then I'll ask you the question again. How do you lose $100 billion in Dubai? I think it's very easy to answer. You will build fabulous bridges. You will build fabulous highways, first-class airports, logistic centers, world-class train system, most fabulous hotels in the city. I guess you navigate the city by all the five-star brand uh, hotels in, in the city. You probably built some of the tallest structures in the world. But actually, you haven't really built a structure, honestly. I think you build a future because we all understand that Cities and societies are not really built in one year. They're not built for one year or 10 years. Johannes, everything is built for centuries to come. So you are putting in $100 billion in something that's fabulous for many, many, many centuries uh, to come. Therefore, I think that is the greatest investment of $100 billion. But that really takes me to, to my final, final last uh, point is that while you build these cities, you really go through good days and you go through bumpy roads. We've just gone through a very big bump. But you know what, what they call that? They call it a hell of a workout. You know, it's a hell of a workout for you really to go through that and come out resilient, strong, and able to deal with it in the future. And that really uh, reminds me of, of the fabulous book that maybe many of you have, have read uh, by Bloom called The Genius of the Beast. You know, maybe I, I gifted that to Sheikh Mohammed this summer, only because Bloom's believe that this incredible genius, which is really all of us, and capitalism goes down, but it, but it comes back smarter, more brilliant, more resilient, more educated to be able to do bigger things and become more successful in, in the future. Therefore, gentlemen, I really believe that the beast in this city is really it's all of us. Therefore, the learning of what we've gone through, the future is clear that we are moving away from what we've gone, what the world have gone through. We, I hope they have, we have learned and we are going to be better human beings to, to cope with the businesses and to, to participate in the, in the growth story of of our cities, if it's here, or if it's uh, anywhere else. Um, but at the same time, uh, as I said, you know, if I were to, to shed light on some of the uh, statistics that we are dealing with just presently, uh, is that you know, it's, it's interesting that the past the four days of Eid, just in this uh, kilometer, square kilometer, we had more than 2.5 million visitors for the four days. And that tells you really so much energy in this, in this fabulous uh, city. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you all, uh, Johannes, I thank you so much uh, for being here. I would like to thank all my colleagues for inviting me to uh, speak to you. And I hope maybe we can answer some questions uh, on points that maybe I was not able to cover. Thank you so much. <laughs>